Hello everyone. In this session, we'll discuss computer instructions. For the designing of the basic computer, we require certain computer commands that are instructions for the basic computer. Now, in our system, we are having three types of computer instructions. Number one, that is memory reference instruction. That means these instructions are going to deal with the memory operands. That means the operand provided to this instruction would be fetched from the memory and would be stored in accumulator and would be processed. So these are memory reference instructions where we would be accessing the memory. The format for this instruction is divided into three parts. The first is address. The first 12 bits specify the operand address then 12 to 14 3 bits specify the opcode and the 15th bit specify the addressing whether the operand address is direct or indirect so based on this the computer instructions are designed for the basic computer we are having certain number of memory reference instructions let us see them one let us see to them one by one now the address of the memory operand is variable that means it can be any but the opcode and the addressing mode that is direct or indirect would be changing in memory reference instruction. Let's see that. So initially, let us consider the op instruction is having direct addressing. So you can see the I bit to be zero. If the addressing is direct, that means you need to set this bit to be zero. So if this bit remains fixed, so this I bit will remain fixed and this opcode bits 12 to 14 would be changing. So for this, let's say we define some code for this. Now the hex code only is required because during the assembly language programming, we require hex code. So the corresponding hex code for this is zero and address can be any. So it is XXX and we are designating this code zero X x x to be the end instruction that means it will perform end operation that means the end the content of the memory to accumulator means the accumulator will be having some data and the content fetched from the memory would be ended with accumulator and result will be stored into the accumulator Similarly, let's see the second instruction, but for second instruction, this opcode bit will change. So let us say now the 12th bit becomes one. So our hex code becomes one X X X and we are designating this code for add instruction. That means add the content of memory to AC. That means the memory operand is to be fetched from the memory and it is to be added with the content of accumulator and the result is again back stored into the accumulator register itself. So this is add operation. So let's now change one more bit. So now we say it is to be opcode to be 010. So what is the corresponding hexadecimal code? It is 2XXX. And we are designating this code for LDA instruction. LDA instruction stands for load the accumulator with memory word means the address specified for the operand from there operand would be fetched and it is stored to the accumulator. So load memory word to accumulator. The next instruction what we are having is the opcode becomes 011. So X code becomes 3xxx and we are saying that this instruction is sta sta means store the content of ac to memory means we are transferring the content of accumulator to memory where the address specified over here the content would be transferred to this address in the memory the next instruction what we are having is 100 that means 4 xxx this is nothing but BUN instruction. BUN stands for branch unconditionally. That means if we want to jump from the one statement, one instruction directly to the another instruction in, in changing the sequence, we go for BUN instruction. So branch unconditionally. Next instruction what we are having is the opcode becomes 101. So it becomes 5XXX and the instruction is BSA. 
BSA stands for branch and save return address. That means it is branch and conditionally. But we need to save the return address from where it has been branched. So it is similar to our function calling in our programming languages. So branch and save return address will store the address where it is to be written back after branching. So BSA. Now this instruction all which are having would be discussing them in details along with their micro operations. Right now we are just summarizing it. And the last instruction what we are having is 110. So that is 6XXX. And the instruction is ISZ. It stands for increment and skip if zero. So the meaning is increment and skip if zero means increment the content of accumulator and skip the next instruction if the content is zero. So I S Z. So these are all our memory reference instruction. But as I told you earlier, in this case, I bit is set to zero. That means it is direct addressing. But if I change this bit zero, if I change this bit 0 to 1, then my code becomes 1 triple 0 and we'll reset our opcode bits 0, 0, 0. So corresponding code becomes 8xxx. So now over here the instruction becomes indirect instruction. That means the memory operands are not directly present at this address. The address of the operand is stored at this address. So 8xxx means it is indirect code, but it will perform end operation only. So similarly, if we change the bits, now i bit is fixed, 1, whereas these three bits are changing. So 0, 0, 1, so it becomes 9xxx, add operation, but indirect. Then again changing the bit, so it is axxx, hexadecimal code, so axxxx, so it becomes LDA, but indirect. Then 1011, so it becomes bxxx. So it is again indirect store to the store the content of accumulator to memory, then CXXX branch unconditionally but indirect, then DXXX means branch and save return address but the address is indirect, and the last one is EXXX. So it is indirect increment skip if zero. So these are all memory reference instruction. Now let's go to the second type of instruction that is register reference instruction. Register reference instruction means it will perform certain operations onto the registers. So that's why register reference instruction. Now the format of this register instruction says that the register operation would be decided based on this 0 to 12, 11 bits. So total 12 bits will decide what register operation we want to perform. But this 4 bits, 12 to 15, that is 1, 1, 1 and 0, will remain fixed for this register reference instruction. Just the change would be there in register operation that is 0 to 11 bits and they will decide which operation is to be performed. Let's see to them one by one. So this is the organization. So 0, 1, 1, 1 and these bits are fixed set to 0. So hex code becomes 7800 so initially 0111 means it is 7 then 1000 so group of 4 bits so 8 then 0000 so 0 and lastly 0000 so it is 0 so the code becomes 7800 so the first code what we had defined is 7800 and the instruction designated to it is CLA means clear the accumulator means clear the content of accumulator and make all the bits to be zero. So this is the first instruction that is register reference instruction CLA. Now let us change this bit. Now earlier this is one. Now we are making this to be zero and this to be one. So our code becomes seven four double zero and we are designating this to be CLE means clear E. Now this E is a flip-flop which we discussed earlier in bus transfer. E is an extra bit which is generated after certain micro operations. So clear E, we want to clear E, for that we go for the code 7400. Then next what we are having is if we change this 001, now the bit becomes 7 
टू डबल जीरो सो द डेजिग्नेटेड बिट इज सी एम ए सो सेवन टू डबल जीरो इट इज द कमांड गिवन फॉर सी एम ए मीन्स कॉम्प्लीमेंट अ ए सी मीन्स कॉम्प्लीमेंट द कंटेंट ऑफ ए सी the next we are having is we are changing the bit position now 001 instead of that we are changing to 0001 so it becomes 7100 and we are saying 7100 is cme means complement e complement the flip flop e that means if it is 0 then it becomes 1 if it is 1 then it becomes 0 then moving further again let's change it so the one is changed now over here so it becomes 7080 the code becomes 7080 and the corresponding instruction what we are having is cir means circulate the content of ac and e to the right side that means circulate right ac and e let us change the bit again so the new code would be generated and that is 7040 now this 7040 the designated instruction is cil means circulate left ac and e now this circular shift operations we had discussed earlier so circulate left is the content of ac and flip flop e the next let us change the bits so this is the bit changing so now the code becomes 7 0 one sorry 7 0 2 0 so the instruction designated to is inc means increment the content of accumulator simply increment the content of accumulator the next instruction let us change the bit now instead of this one we are making this one rest all zero so the code becomes 7010 and it is spa instruction means skip the next instruction if ac is positive means if the content of accumulator is positive then skip the next instruction in the sequence of the program then let us change one more bit now so now the code becomes 7008 the instruction is sna means skip the next instruction if accumulator is negative so based on the content of accumulator we need to skip the next instruction okay so now again changing this bit we get new instruction so the code becomes 7004 and the instruction designated to it is sza means skip the next instruction if ac is zero if the content of ac is zero then and only then skip the next instruction then next instruction what we are having is by changing this bit we beca it becomes 7002 zero, so the instruction designated to it is sza e means it stands for skip the next instruction if e is zero that means e flip flop is zero then skip the next instruction then the next what we are having is 7001 which is the last instruction that is hlt means halt the computer means it says that your program is halting at this place so these are all the register reference instructions which perform certain operations onto the registers and the last type of instructions what we need to discuss is input output instructions which are designated or we can say which performs the instructions onto input and output devices so let us see the set, format of this instruction now the set format for this instruction is saying that this 0 to 11 bits will designate io operation by changing this bits it will decide the io operation rest 12 to 15 would be 1 they cannot change so this is fixed in the case of input output instruction so let us see the instruction format so the bits a 16 bit instruction 1 1 1 1 this is fixed this would be changing so let us change one by one so first of all we make this to be one and what would be the corresponding hex code the hex code would be f800 and this f800 we are designating this code for inp instruction means input a character and this inputting a character will transfer this character to accumulator as we had seen from the input device the input would be inputting a character will send this character to inpr register and this inpr register will transfer the content to to accumulator 
so this is how the INP instruction will work it transfers the character to AC let us change the bit over here for the second instruction so the bit becomes 0 1 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 and 0 so now the hex code becomes F400 and we are designating this to be out instruction now out instruction now you should be uh, very much clear about this now out instruction would be output character from AC means we are transferring our accumulators data to the output device so output character from AC the next instruction let us change the bit again so it becomes F200 and the instruction what we are having is SKI means skip on input flag now this input flag is a flag which decides whether it is an input operation or not. Now this we will be discussing them in the detail while discussing the interrupts. So the code for skip instruction that is SKI skip next instruction on input flag over here skip means skip the next instruction on input flag. Let us go for the next instruction that is 0001 and it is F100. The instruction designated is SKO. It stands for skip on output flag. So skip the next instruction when the output flag is set. Then next instruction what we are having is F080. The instruction designated is ION means interrupt enable on means interrupt is on that means interrupt is generated so this instruction we need to fire. Then the last instruction what we are having is F040 and that is what is IOF means we are saying that interrupt enable off that means now we need to make the interrupt off so for that we give, give the instruction to be IOF. This is the set of input output instructions wherein we are having six instruction. Now if we combine all the three types of instructions that is memory reference instruction, register reference instructions and input output instructions then in all for the design of a basic computer we are having in all 25 computer instructions. Now in this case this was the set types of instruction which we had discussed now we need to say for the designing of any basic computer what is the minimum requirement for designing the set of instructions so we say this instruction set completeness when can we say that instruction set is complete so for that we are having three conditions the first is the instruction set should have the instructions for arithmetic logic and shift instructions then instructions for moving information to and from memory and processor registers that means that we should have the instructions which transfers the data from memory to register and from register to memory that means for example in our case it was LDA and STA the third one is program control instructions that means our jump instructions that means we had discussed that means skip on next instruction if AC is positive so all the skip instructions were jump instructions so the instruction said should have this instructions and the last one it should have input output instructions because if we don't have input output instructions in the instruction set then input output operation with IO devices is not possible so the instruction set should have all the instructions related to these four categories